when you want to build real world computer vision projects, it's often a case where we have to run peer to peer connections. So we basically have like a network where we have a server that can receive the result from different nodes, or you can also call them clients. So a client could be an edge device processing. It could be a Jetson Nano running with a Autolytics YOLO model doing update detection, instant segmentation, anything that you can do with Autolytics that can run on the client or at the edge. Could be that you have multiple devices running on the edge or on the client side, sending all the results back to the server. So that's what we're going to see how we can set up in this video here. We're going to have a client running with a YOLO 11 model streaming the results with WebSockets. So we're going to cover how WebSockets work, how you can stream the results to a server, then the server will receive the results and you can do whatever you want with the results on your server. And it's crazy fast because it's using networking WebSockets with a direct connection. So it's basically just a direct connection between your two nodes. Let's just jump straight into my code editor here. So we have a server file and we also have a, a client file. If you just start with the server, this is basically like the main component. And then we have multiple different edges that's going to connect with a WebSocket to that server and send all the results. Could be that you're running 10 different edge devices. You want to process the results on the server to raise alerts from your different cameras and so on. This is actually how it works. And we're going to see how we can set it up on your local host. But Everything besides that is basically just networking. If you have the correct IP and you have the port, then you have a WebSocket up and running and your systems can communicate on those ports. Remember to be in the same network when you're doing it. You can both use this in cloud. You can use it on your own local computer, whatever. If you want to run in cloud, just make sure that you have the correct network configuration. This is our server side code. And for your clients, you can have multiple clients. You can have as many clients as you want running, and then you can aggregate the results on the server side. So first of all here, we're going to have a function called receive from peer. We're going to add some locking from Autolytics, daytime CSV, so we can stream these results from the server into a CSV file as well, save the results for later processing, or basically just locking off the results. So we can use sockets from Python. That's gonna be a web socket. We have JSON, CSV, all the different imports that we're going to set up. Then we need a host. So this will be a network URL. Then we also need the port number that they're going to communicate on. Here in this function, we can also specify the safe path to where we want to store the results that we're receiving from our clients in a CSV file. Then we can create a socket directly. So we just have socket.socket. .socket. We set up this configuration. So it's a streaming socket as well. So this is actually like a bi bi-directional socket internet connection between two con connections and you can communicate back and forth. Right now, we're just going to stream results from our edge to our server. Then we bind and then we're just going to listen on this specific port if there's coming incoming any data from our client. So we're going to just lock listening on this host with this port number as well. We're going to have a while loop that basically just first of all, we connect to it. And then we're just going to print the results. We load it in JSON format. So when we receive it, we have to first decode it. Then we have to, oh, first we have to encode it. And then we have to decode it again when we receive our results because it needs to be packaged up, sent over the internet. This is pretty much how the whole internet works as well. So we're working with network packages. So it needs to be in binaries or basically bytes, first of all. So we convert that. So we take our data, the decode, then we decode our data. We can then load it with JSON and then we have our decoded data in our variable here. We're just going to extend a results list where we're going to put all our detections on. We run through all our decoded results and basically just save our results to this JSON file or CSV file. You can log it to whatever you want. You can set up JSON, CSV, it doesn't really matter. So this is our receive from peer, just receiving all the data that is incoming from the client. Then we can save the results to CSV this is basically just going to take the timestamp, the class that we're detecting, the name as well, confidence and the bounding box. And then we're just going to write a row. So CSV file, you know, Excel sheets, we just have one line by line for each detection that we're getting from our client. Then we can just run it here, receive from peer. It's going to receive the data from the client and store it in the CSV file. If we then jump into the client code before we're going to run it, we need, you can run two computers, make sure that those two computers are on the same network. This is often the case if you want to set it up in a production system. You have edge devices running on the edge, streaming the results to cloud or to your server. 
where you basically just do the business logic. Could also be done on the edge and then send the other results. It doesn't have to be the YOLO results. You can do all your analytics, all the processing that you want on the edge, and then just stream the output results to your server. So again, we have sockets, we import Autolytics or YOLO model from Autolytics, because this is where we want to run our actual update detection. You can run anything in here. It's just a program, Python program running, streaming the results, and you can choose whatever you want to stream. You can even stream your images as well if you want to do that for some reason. Most often you want to do that could be your S device or client triggering an alert or some kind of event, and then it streams the image and the results to your server. So here, we're just going to encode our results, dump it into JSONs because then we have a payload that we can send over our socket. So this is just our payload, binaries, send it over our socket. We close our socket connection as well. Now we can set up an instance of our YOLO 11 nano model. You can choose whatever model. You can also run with a custom model as well. We open up our video capture. This is just going to be the serif index. We do the detections and then we stream them. We assert that we are able to open up the video capture. I think I have to go on one here. Then we open up webcam, reading in frames, running our inference with our model. We predict on M0. So we just go frame by frame from our webcam, do predictions, send them to our peer, which is our server. So what we're going to do here is our server PC IP address. Is this find up here? So this is my local host, could also be zeros. This is where you have to configure the specific URL that you're working on and make sure that this is your local URL or basically if you have a public URL, you can also do that. Just make sure that you have the correct URL and also the port number that you're listening on. We print the results, we send them to a peer. That's pretty much it. We can now open up a new terminal. There we go. Now, first of all, let's start up our server. So we just run Python peer and we have our server.py. We don't have to do anything else let's try to run it now it's going to set up our websocket we're listening on this url or port and make sure that up here we even specify 127.0.0.1 this is the exact same as just 0000, 000, 000, 000. this is just our local host then we can open up a new terminal this is just simulating running it on a separate computer you can run it on any computer any two computers as long as they're in the same network they will be able to communicate with each other it's listening now. Let's go up, create a new terminal. There we go. Now we can just run our Python client, peer client.py. Let's run it. Let's see, it should open my webcam right in front of me. We can now see that we're getting all these results here. So this is still on the client side that we're streaming it. But if I go inside the server program, we should see the exact same uh, results. So this is like this terminal here. So we have connection. We have received entry, received entry, connection received entry so we're always just looking this is a, this is act like the detections that is getting streamed we have a class zero person because i'm sitting right in front of my camera here on my computer so all the results are just streaming should also go into the csv file so if we open it up here we have our received results this is all the results that we're just streaming live into the csv file as well so we can see it's just it just keeps appending 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 to our csv file of course, ideally, when you're working with project and so on, you want to do some business logic. You don't want to save all the results here. You want to apply some triggers, apply some business logic and algorithms on top of the detections. Right now, we're just using optic detection, but you can use whatever with Autolytics. You can run any Python code on as well. It will work in the exact same way. This is pretty awesome. This is how systems run out in the real world. If you have multiple nodes, think of it as a network. We have the router, and then we have multiple different routers connecting to that single router or you can have nodes in your network as well then you just have one centralized server receiving all the results from the different nodes this is very important to know if you're building computer vision systems want to get into more like high level computer vision how to act like build systems that can get out there and run in production only thing that you need to do run these two python scripts make sure your devices are on the same network and you have a streaming computer vision system up and running. Hope you learned on this video here. I definitely encourage you to go in and test it out on your own, train your own update detection models. You can even just visualize the results here from the client as well with Imsho or whatever, draw the bounding boxes, do some business logic on top of your detections, and then you have a pretty cool computer vision project up and running. Hope you learned on. 
Hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy streaming.